How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. Welcome to another study session. I've recently taken a break after finishing a series of videos in which I covered the anatomy of the skeleton. I still have some other videos that I'd like to make on the subject so you may see some more here and there but for the most part all of the bones that make up the skeleton have been covered in detail and so now it's time to begin studying the muscles. Of course it goes without saying, if this is the first study session you are watching, then I do recommend going back and watching the previous ones, especially since we are looking at the muscles now, and the skeleton is going to play a big part in that, so it would help if you understood it. Also, I want to give you a, a brief introduction since this is the first video in a, a, a new chapter of this series. Some of you may already know that these study sessions are a way for me to document my own learning process and in turn help you learn as well. I have a habit of taking a, a rather in-depth approach because I do like to understand the whole picture even though at times you might be thinking, how the hell is this relevant to artists? In addition to these videos, I do make what I refer to as study documents over on my Patreon page which I like to think of as tutorials on paper, so if you enjoy all of this then perhaps check that out as well. But with that being said, let's get on with this and start looking at the muscles for the face and head. You know at the start there you saw me drawing this, this is the human skull and I covered how to draw this in the video that I made on the anatomy of the skull. I've copied over these proportional grid lines from a previous drawing I made and the reason I've drawn this out again is because we are going to be placing the muscles onto this. Now before I start doing that we need to understand what we'll be getting ourselves into. There's a lot of muscles on the face. I'll put some of these anatomical diagrams up on screen and you'll be able to see that there's muscles laid on top of muscles here and you might be wondering, Dan, do we really need to cover all of this? Well, I think we may as well because these muscles exist and they each play a role in allowing us to create facial expressions. Now, unlike our other muscles, these move the skin as opposed to the bones, with the exception of two muscles here that are referred to as the masticatory muscles. This is the temporalis muscle and the masseter muscle. These are what move the mandible, our jaw, right? So everything else excluding these two muscles moves the skin. Look, I'm a few minutes into this video and I haven't drawn anything yet, so with this in mind, let's begin covering all of these muscles. Now, I think the best way for me to go about this would be to do this in Photoshop or within some other software that allows me to separate all of these muscles into layers, but for consistency, I want to keep drawing in this sketchbook, so I'll do my best to draw and colour code all of these muscles on this front and side view. So let's begin with those two masticatory muscles that I had shown earlier. Firstly, we have the temporalis, as you might have guessed due to its name, this sits over the temporal bone of the skull. It's a thin, fan-shaped muscle that's fairly large because, as I said, this is raising the mandible and assisting the other muscle that moves it, this being the masseter muscle, and these are the main muscles which move the mandible. These sit at either side of the mandible and originate from the zygomatic arch. When studying how these move the mandible, you'll probably come across the term mastication, and although it sounds very similar to another word meaning something entirely different, it's actually the term used to describe the movement involved when chewing, right? And these two muscles allow us to do that. And remember, these next muscles on the face move the skin, not the bones, and they allow us to make expressions. Before I draw them on, I'm going to quickly add the cartilage for the nose and also the ears. This is because some of these muscles will cover these. So now I'll draw the frontalis muscle, and again, the clue is in the name, this sits over the frontal bone of the skull in the area of the forehead. This raises the eyebrows and moves the scalp. Next we have a few muscles that exist at the side of the head, layered over this temporalis muscle above the ear. There's three of these, the one towards the back being called the auricularis superior muscle and the one to the front being the auricularis anterior muscle. Now the one in the middle is called the temporoperiotalis muscle. These muscles allow us to move the ear. 
In addition to these three, there's also a much smaller muscle behind the ear at the back called the auricularis posterior muscle. I'll make these four muscles be the same colour, otherwise I might run out of colours here. So the next muscles are the corrugator supercilii above the eye sockets. These are small muscles which contribute to the movement of the eyebrows. The next muscle is the procerus muscle, and this is a triangular muscle that sits between the eyes around here. Below the nose there is the depressor septi, this is a muscle that's involved in moving the nose along with a few more here. Another one is the ala nasalis muscle at either side of the nose which moves the nostrils. Next to these at the front is the compressor narium minor and also the dilator naris anterior. Finally, the last muscle around the nose here is the transverse nasalis. Wrapping all the way over, this allows us to compress the nostrils. There's a muscle at the tip of the chin called the mentalis. This raises the chin and pushes up the lower lip. Around this, there is the depressor labii inferiors, a pair of muscles that helps lower the bottom lip. At either side of the mouth are two fin muscles called buccinator muscles, occupying that space between the maxilla and the mandible. These help to move the cheeks. Again, at either side near here is a pair of levator anguli oris muscles which elevate the corners of the mouth. Some of the names for these muscles are very hard to pronounce. Another set of muscles at each side of the mouth is the rhizorius muscles. This retracts the angle of the mouth. At the base of the mandible, there are two muscles called the depressor anguli oris. Their function is the depression of the angle of the mouth. Another set of muscles around the mouth here is the zygomatic major. These elevate and draw the corners of the mouth laterally. There's also the zygomatic minor muscles. So as you can see now, there's a, a lot of muscles around the mouth that helps it move and these typically come in pairs and there's still a few more to go here. There's what is called the levator labii superiors at either side which elevates the upper lip. There's also, and get ready for this one, the levator labii superioris aliquae nasi. I expect everyone to remember these names. These muscles are rather long, running from the mouth up between the eyes. These are what dilates the nostrils and elevates part of the nose and lips. So those are all of the muscles around the mouth and nose. There's also a pair of muscles above between the eyes here called the depressor supercilii. Their function being the depression of the eyebrows. Now at this point I have two more muscles to add around the eyes and mouth, but before I do that, I'm going to add in two balls within the eye sockets of the skull. These will obviously be the eyeballs. And this looks kind of scary now, but the reason I've drawn these in is because there are muscles of the eyes called the orbicularis oculi, and there's part of this muscle called the palpebral part, I believe, which lays over the eyeballs like this. This muscle closes the eyelids. Finally, the last muscle of the mouth which forms the lips is the orbicularis oris muscle. This compresses and protrudes the lips. So there we go, that's the muscles of the face, and there's a lot there, and I mean there has to be really, all of these muscles are what allow us to create many different expressions on the face. Now in terms of expressions, I think that's a, a subject to cover in a later video more in depth because that's when your understanding of these muscles will really come into play. Like we'll be able to look at which of these muscles are used when making various expressions. This probably isn't the last time I'll be looking at some of these muscles either, I'm sure as I progress with this series that I'll be referring to them. But for the moment, I'm going to end this one here, if you enjoyed this then be sure to leave a like. And like with all of these study sessions, I will be creating a study document for this and putting that up on the Patreon page. So with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. 
If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.